rewind a few years, and never in a million years would you have found me showing up to an event in a city at a bar or a restaurant with a whole bunch of people I had never met in my life. And honestly, even if I did, I don't think I'd have gone. I was the epitome of a shy kid growing up. I was either shy, didn't talk to anyone, or I sought attention by being the class clown. And for some reason, not raising my hand and shouting obscene answers seemed like a logical way to go about making friends. And every time my crush walked by, my head became irreversibly glued to the floor. Throughout my life, shyness has affected almost everything I have done. And so I understand the impact it can have from keeping you away from opportunities for growth to turning you away from nearly all valuable chances of developing a human connection. As a child, I played a lot. I had so much fun. I learned skills and developed self-confidence by spending time in the garden, tending to plants and growing my own food. My grandfather was a farmer. He would grow maize and groundnuts and sell to neighboring villages in a small town, Monze, just in southern Zambia. Life in the village can be industrious. We never had to buy machinery because we made our own. And in an attempt to make farming efficient, I learned how to make holes from iron and wood. While this only solved half of our problems, we had a challenge, water management. To my grandfather, every drop counted, and we were counting every one of them. Farm life in rural Zambia is exciting, but there are times it gets challenging as well. Climate challenges, poor infrastructure, poor resource management undermine productivity, profitability, and, sust and sustainability. There's a need for a system that makes this process easier for farmers in our country. An article that was published by FAO on the future of food and farm on the future of food and agriculture predicts that the world will need to produce 50% more food, feed, and biofuel in 2050 than it did in 2012. And in Zambia, there are about 600,000 small-scale farmers, of which a small fraction are emergent farmers. Problems arise during farming and the natural watering well of our crops gets disturbed. We all know that this industry uses a lot of water, and maybe, just maybe, in the near future, these wastes will represent a lot of money, enough to pay the debt our country has. Small-scale farmers, like my grandfather, cannot afford irrigation computers because they're expensive. And so I thought to myself, what if I could design something cheaper, something better, one that understands the needs of the farmer and the plants? Remember, growing up as a kid and wanting to play around where no one taught me how to use my imagination, I asked questions. The wise I've always asked gave me the drive to turn a passion, turn a hobby into a passion a passion that would change the industry in my country. I was never born an exceptional student, but it did not stop me from finding solutions to my grandfather's problems. By the way, I'm a forester, an agronomist, a software developer. 
I design a smart chip system to minimize input, water input, and human intervention. I call it Netagro. Powered by, uh, powered by an Arduino, a simple microcontroller that enabled me to create this innovation. And you may ask yourself, how does this work? It has sensors such as temperature, humidity, soil moisture. The information gathered is sent to the heart of the system. And the decisions taken by the system depend on the sensor's response. What makes this innovation better is that it is targeting over 10 million users in Zambia. Because it uses SMS, missed notification to control and automate the farm. Now you may ask yourself, what does the future hold for this innovation? Is the grass greener? This innovation will be used in farming sports, such as climate management, farm animal management, and fireplace detection. At the same time, it will be used in conjunction with the mobile solar plant designed to track the sun for effective energy harvesting. They say inventions become perfect by slow improvement, and each step is an invention. I was never free from challenges. I had no idea how to put this idea together and I turned to my friends, my colleagues who suggested ways to make this idea better. I now believe that life is easier when you share the idea. It even gets better when you expand the circle because anything is possible when people support you. Just as my parents taught me morals, etiquette, discipline, safety, what if we could teach children the lifelong ability to innovate? Can children learn systematic creativity at such an early age? Absolutely. The role of young people in shaping the world's economy is clear. We are the largest generation of youth in history, and given this young labor force, there's a need to explore other ways for job creation. This technology is important now than before because it is encouraging and inspiring people to shift from passive consumers to active creators, while at the same time prompting people to spend their money on handmade, locally crafted items that are perceived as being of higher quality. This also redefines employees as creators and therefore innovators. And I believe to make African creators, we need to give them platforms to create such innovations. Netagrow is changing the perception of Africans from billion users to billion creators in agriculture. Thank you. Thank you.